Hi everyone, this is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University again, and uh, this is the introduction to the CUBE uh, project in the introduction to drawing for designers class. And um, this is gonna be the first assignment, but I'm also gonna give an overview of the project as well. Uh, there'll be hopefully seven parts, that's the plan. The project that we do is to um, split up a cube into two parts that are um, identical and that are also uh, um, identical in the sense that they can be overlapped. So kind of like two left handed left hands. You can put this hand like that. You cannot put this hand over that one. Um, and there's a process so that 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 happens. So these are just different, different, um, different ones. Um, and typically what will happen depending on the section um, will be a, uh, a part that will be going up and a part that's kind of going down, but that depends on the section. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is actually uh, split the face of the cube into two parts. And we're just gonna have a couple of rules for that. Um, one could do it basically almost infinite ways, but we're just, for this project, we're just gonna use, um, the first rule is that we start in the left center of the left side and then we go to any point um, in the square, and then we end up um, on the other side of the square. Um, so I actually, yeah, you could just do, you know, different, different types perhaps like that. Um, what will happen is that actually if you end up in the middle, and this is something I might change later, but if you end up in the middle and say you do a section like, this, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Um, the two pieces, the two half of the cubes, because this is already symmetrical, perfectly symmetric and also perfectly equal area, as you can see, this is stolen from here. Um, the cube will be somewhat, not flat, but it will be exactly um, sort of similar around. Um, anyway, it's not a rule that this can be used yet, so we'll just do maybe different ones like this. You can also go, so always always start from the center. Um, and you'll see that that's because when we come around with the pattern, it has to meet up again there. Uh, so we don't have anything on the edge. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna do here the one that actually I will pick eventually. <laughs> but for you, the student, just do a bunch and then we pick one afterwards. Uh, now one could do things like this too, but that would not work. <laughs> when we actually go to build this, it wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be able to fit these two parts, right? Because there's undercuts. Uh, also something like this might be tough because getting something in there, uh, when we build it again by hand, is gonna be tough um, in terms of just thicknesses. So anyway, do a bunch and then we pick one. Uh, let's see, you can also go to the, uh, to the top, uh, which gives other interesting. Uh, and sometimes sections that look, yeah, maybe less interesting, less spiky, could actually bring um, very interesting designs eventually. So I would not, um, you know, I would not say, okay, that, that, that's not good just because, oh, I just did two the same. I was trying to do something that was, see actually if you, if you try to design too much, then you, there. So this is one, two, three, four segments. Uh, this is three, three to four, I would say is pretty good. Um, okay. So now I'm just going, just because I have to work with this pattern in the other parts of the series, uh, I'm just gonna say I picked this one. 
Okay. Uh, eventually, we're going to have letters uh, naming this, all these points. So this is going to be a, an A. Uh, that's going to be a B, C, D, E. Um, sorry. Actually, it's A, B, C, B, C, and B. And might as well do that right here now so that we have it as a reference. Um, so that's A, B. Sorry, A, B, and C. Got this wrong. A is in the middle. Yeah. And it goes outwards. These are going to call X, and then here on the sides, C, D, E, and then it repeats. I'm going to show these again. Um, so for our design here, eventually it's going to be um, yeah. This is here. I'll explain later why that's called X, but um, it's because I added it afterwards. C, B, X, C. Okay, so once we do this, we're going to say, okay, I like this one. I'm going to do that one. Um, so the next step is to, um, actually, I should, I should quickly say that once we, um, we're going to apply that section. Which is this section, right? This section to all the sides, but we're gonna do it through a particular process, a particular symmetry, a few symmetry operations. Um, and we're just gonna do the four sides, okay? We're not gonna do the top and the bottom. However, you could actually apply the same section to that as well. And I'll just quickly show what would happen then. Um, let's see. Yeah, no. So this cube that we had on before, can remember now which one was the beginning. It's very important that we actually remember what the beginning is um, as a reference point. Um, so this is a student. Um, this was Florence. She actually went a little bit further and instead of just doing top and sides and then leaving the top, she also did one where the same section, okay, um, instead of applying it just to one face, she applied it to all the faces, okay? And there's a little bit of different process which um, there's another video online that you can see. Um, but whatever we do for this cube in terms of figuring out what these pieces are for the inside, these are the same parts that can be used to do a cube that actually split into three parts. And this is what the three part cube would look like. And again, the three parts are exactly the same which is pretty neat. Uh, so once again, the triangle parts that are made for these two unit one are the same um, for this one. Um, and then Lawrence went a little bit further and she split it into six parts. Let's see if I can show it. Have to make a little room here. Um, so in other words, she took one of these guys. Let's see what that might look like. Mm -mm. And another piece. <laughs> Okay, so that's like that. This is like this. 
Oh, except the split is not there. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. So, and then she went even further and unfortunately I don't have the full, but she actually hinged those parts together and I'll, I'll show you later why you can, well, it's pretty cool. And the whole Q project was actually um, initiated by a professor of mine in um, Sardinia when I went to high school in the 70s. Um, and I'll show you in a second what he did with this process. So that's definitely extra work, which you probably won't want to do, but um, it just goes to sh just shows you what you can do starting from the basic shape. All right, so let's go back to the to the steps. So now I'm gonna go through the steps of how we get, uh, well, how we get to the outside, how we do the outside, okay? And um, I'm gonna take a piece of trace. Naturally, before I show that, let's talk about symmetry and symmetry groups. I'm not a mathematician, but it's actually really cool math and it has to do with group theory and sets. Um, and this is just, there's, it turns out there's only 24 ways you can move stuff around on the plane. There's actually 230 in 3D space, but on the plane, there's only uh, 24. And this example shows that if you have a piece of glass, okay, let's say with a dot right there, you can do several things. You can you can flip this piece of glass along that axis like this, right? You get that. Or you can also rotate it right here. Oops. And it goes to the other spot. Okay. Another thing that I can do, I can also Flip it along that axis. And I get that. Okay. An interesting thing about the one we just did earlier, the one where I actually rotate to get that basically the one at the bottom here, is that I can actually obtain that. you'll see how this applies to our project. So to get from here to here, I can do this, right? So I rotate 180 on that spot, on that center. Um, but another way to do it, so I'm, I'm just working now in 2D space, right? Width and depth or, yeah. But here's what happens if I actually flip this thing in 3D space, so I can flip it once like that, okay, along that axis, like this, and then I can flip it once along this axis, like that. So I actually obtained the same thing. So 180 this way, right, to get that or to get this is equivalent to, let's see, this would be, is that 180 when I go like that? Or is that 360? Now I can't remember. <laughs> um, anyway, I do that movement twice and I get the same shape. So this is just, you know, one type of, well, in this particular case, you've got four ways that you can fool around with it. Um, in some other shapes, it might be a little more complicated. And this book just shows what kind of symmetries are used to get patterns and you're probably familiar with um, some of these patterns okay now very simply when something is you know the same you could call it mirror symmetry or you could also call it bilateral symmetry so in other words the two sides 
of the same. Um, so what we'll do now, we'll apply similar operations to this, um, to this design. So where is our design? Our design is right here. It's gonna, this is another, oh, my students already know from this semester, you have to have tracing paper because it's an amazing material. Very, very useful. And let's see. So we start out with the, with the basic square. Well, R square. Okay, that's our section. And I'm gonna call that, I don't know, start, whatever, something, because um, it's very important that we, we keep track of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate, um, I'm sorry, never mind. The first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna mirror it like that, okay? And somewhere I actually have a mirror here. Um, there it is. It's actually a little bit, well, it's got this cross, but um, anyway, if you have a mirror of that thing, that's what a mirror image of it looks like, right? I mean, it's, it's just what you would see if you put it in front of the mirror. So that's why it's called sometimes mirror image or mirror symmetry. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna take yet another piece. And quickly, and once I finish this little pattern, okay. Now I'm actually short, but that's okay. I'll take another one. This will be sort of my storyboard for the whole project. So now I'm at that point. Now that I've done that, I take this entire thing. So in other words, first I do a mirror. The next thing I do is I do a rotation of 180 over right here, okay? And the reason we started out here in the center is because now when I do the rotation, either this way or that way, I'm gonna be able to kind of reconnect the two parts. So let's do that. So, so I'm pivoting on that spot. And this is now my cube, the four sides. Um, and what I should probably do is, if I recall, let's see, yeah, that was the start, so it goes up. So this is the start right here. Uh, so that's my design. So what, what happens is you have kind of a, a low point here and a high point there, okay? And if I didn't do that, just real quick, if I, if I simply repeated this, um, which you could, it's just that then the two cubes are not gonna be a, perfectly identical, um, unless of course you have a, that other section that is already very symmetrical. But um, so if I, if, I, if I did this, especially if my, if my initial section is kind of skewed and I have like a lot of stuff at the bottom and little stuff at the top, what would happen is that, and I can already see pretty much that these two halves or these two sections of these cubes, um, it looks to me like this part would be a little bigger, you know, because the area is a little bigger, okay? So these are the two steps again. Let's repeat them, okay? So we have the initial, then we mirror it, right? And then we take that whole thing and we flip it over to the other side. Uh, okay, and once we have this, um, eventually what we'll have is, I mean, eventually we just put the top and the bottom, right, in the, in the actual final project. Uh, oops, I forgot a line there. Notice how this line, this will actually be turning the corner there in the cube, but you see how it's straight? Remember that because it has to do with two, two two segments that are gonna be on the same plane. We're gonna to have to do some optimization to make the cube look good. Um, 
So we would just add, you know, the square there. Okay. Uh, some of these designs, well, of course, will look different, right? If this spike goes touches there, there's other other things, other issues. Um, but that's sort of an individual. So this is the first assignment. So you just put your name here, um, and that's the first assignment. Okay. So this is really just the introduction. Well, the first assignment I'm going to do now the overview of the Q project, um, and then I'll end this video. Um, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of, um, of background, again, from my going back to my high school days. Um, and on iLearn, there's already a video about this project that my uh, professor did, which was building a model of a sea urchin's mouth. Um, these are the little parts. Uh, and he just looked at it, you know, with a hand lens and sort of started figuring out, hmm, how is this thing put together? And he started doing some models, you know, rough at first, just to get the sense of what the parts are. These are the jaws. And then he built a first model. And then that looked like that, the first model. Um, anyway, recently, well, about three years ago, actually, four years ago, I actually rebuilt it myself and showed it at some conferences. And these are actually some drawings I helped him do, <laughs> again, back in high school for the book. Um, and this is the real, well, the model. These are the teeth. Um, and as you press this, it opens up. So very cool bio-inspired design project. Um, completely different in a sense if this is a real animal <laughs> um, as opposed to the other book that he did which is on the kind of things basically that we're doing except it of course took them a lot further um, this means uh, models of uh, rotational geometry so everything is about how parts rotate on the plane and then in 3d space and starts out with the basic grids and just to show you how the Q project, in a sense, um, let's see, this particular shape that he did was where he took the cube, and he just did a very simple, very simple section. Okay, um, he actually went on and did it on all sides, and he made three parts, like this, exactly the same. Okay. And then what he did, uh, which is similar to what Florence, my student did, was that if you take one of these out, okay, toss it, uh, then these two can actually, along the diagonal, if you hinge them along the diagonal, can actually rotate inside the other, okay? Because they are exactly the same shape. Um, so we did that. And well, first it shows how the how to construct the shape. He has some really beautiful, interesting things like the map of all the folds. Um, turns out it's a helix, so it goes into again the movement of rotation. You know the double helix, um, and then later on, um, it built. You can start with just two, right? Just like that. That's what this is showing. Um, well, actually, this is showing two side by side about that right there. Um, and when you put them in a series like this, the cool thing that it did eventually was he actually made them into a, a ring, which is this. And that ring, there's some interesting stuff. And these are actually some classmates of mine out in the courtyard of the high school. Um, he was trying to demonstrate that this is a spontaneous, natural distribution of people, uh, you know, just holding hands. Uh, so that's the model. I rebuilt it also. It looks like this. So again, it's, uh, let's see, two, it's this unit. This unit rotates inside the other, and it's repeated uh, six times, and then it's hinged together. 
And what's nice about it is that it actually, the whole thing, it's called a cooperative system because if I move one thing, everything else moves. So there is like a transmission of the movement. And if you keep moving it, let's see, I think I have to do it from this side. It actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it turns into a cube. Uh, so pretty cool. And I don't have with me now yet another step that he suggested, although he never built it, but I did. <laughs> and um, so in other words, he said, what if we could put just like hundreds and thousands of these things and what would happen? So I actually built that and also a student in Italy uh, that is a student of a friend of mine um, did it in, in middle school, actually. Um, so uh, he was talking about how do muscles work? Muscles work by rotation. And when you rotate them, when the muscle pulls, it actually um, shrinks, right? So that's how it's able to pull. So the rotation generates a contraction uh, towards the middle. Um, so he had these photographs of these natural things because he was envisioning that these things could be like materials, um, which of course now it, it's it's happening. It's it's actually people are trying to do these things. Um, so that's my professor, and um, I can show. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, actually, I want to show you something else. I made. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, actually, I did not make the file. A student did when I was in Delft in Holland. Um, basically, it's the same shape. We just put um, we put little channels so that the hinge is actually um, the uh, fishing line going through. And this particular one is pretty nice because it can't be perfect. So it has a well, what happened? It had a nice. Oh, there we go. It's kind of a, like a three-way switch. See how it sort of, no, I can't do it. It was doing it before. It stopped in the middle there. Uh, anyway, this is just the same, the same group. Actually, that you can see that a little bit better, how it turns into a cube. Um, Okay, he did other, in the book, actually I should show you this. So he did this sectioning stuff to also these things called platonic solids, which are the um, only five possible regular solids. And by regular means that they have all the same regular faces. Um, see if I can see it. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so that's the tetrahedron, the cube, or esahedron, octahedron, dodecahedron, sorry, icosahedron and dodecahedron. And he made this one where he cut up the faces and then um, made these little pyramids that went to the center of the shape. And so you got 120 pieces. So this is always the same. That's his hand right there holding it. So I actually went ahead and built one with a different solid, with this solid, which is the icosahedron, which is 20. That was tw um, 12 pentagons. Uh, this is 20 triangles. I'm not now going to take this out, but these are, and a student, Clifford, his name was, helped me build this out of uh, uh, laser cutting it, but I'm not going to take it because if I do, <laughs> I would be done with the video, but it, it does the same thing. It it, it unravels like this. Um, so pretty cool um, stuff, I think. Um, okay. So let's just talk about what the steps will be uh, real quick. Um, oh, actually, sorry, I keep stopping here, but but this is a nice shape that Mm, my professor sent me when, uh, let's see, 1996, so about 25 years ago. Um, and about five years ago, 
somebody at Harvard did a material with this shape. So it's a pretty nice, so it's a transformable shape. Oops. So it's basically a cube. Now he sent it to me and he probably was not aware, but it turns out that somebody, a mathematician in 1926 invented this shape. Although I don't know if he knew that it could fold. Um, all right, so now we, I'm just gonna, re, uh, real quick, because there's gonna be all the other parts, I'm just gonna quickly um, explain what the process will be uh, now that we have our, our little storyboard. And remember we said, don't forget where you start. Very important. Okay, so that's that's my shape. That will be my guide, my my storyboard throughout the project. Okay. So the trick now is, I mean, we can build this out of paper, um, drawing it and then cutting it out because we know what it is. It's a grid, right? Each one of these things is more or less on a. I don't want to mess it up now. Here on a square grid, okay? So it's not that hard to draw these and then cut it with a knife, essentially. I mean, there's, how are we gonna do it? It's the technical part is, you know, it's just technical. Um, the tricky part is figuring out the inside, okay? I mean, it's just a little more work because these dimensions are all kind of different. Um, and the way we're gonna do that, <coughs> is that we need to figure out how far all these points are from the face, right? From our points. You can hear the Saturday night, Holly Davidson's in North Beach. Um, so how far is it from this point called C, this point B, X and C to the center, which I'm calling Z? Well, one way to figure it out is to cut slices through those points with a plane that goes through the center. And then if I could look at that slice and draw a line on that slice, that would tell me how big that is, okay? So these two sections or these two, yeah, cross sections along the half of the cube and this one along the diagonal give me all, basically all the information that I need because um, if this is my front cut in half and I'm calling these A, B and C, okay? And it repeats on the other side. Um, that actually solves any point on the grid that is, sorry, I should say that, okay, so I cut this I cut through that through that space, um, and then I look, and of course this now happens to be also if it was just outside, but just bear with me. Um, so these are the distances, okay? So from A to Z, from B to Z, and from C to Z, these are three of the pieces of information that we need to then build our um, inside. Um, so A, B, and C, and it just repeats because in other words, this B is gonna be gonna be similar to that B, to that B, and to this B. They're gonna be all the same distance to the center because they're the same distance to the, to the front of the cube, okay? Um, and then the other spots that we need is this, this X spot and also anything that is on the edge, right? In other words, if I draw my grid right now, we have, we have found everything that's on this cross, but now we need everything that is on outside and also this other spot, which we left kind of behind. So I call that X. I call that X because at first I didn't want students to use it, but now it's okay. So, um, and then here just for ease, I call this D and E, okay? And you'll notice that, so these are all X's. These are all these, and these are all E's, okay? 
So now we just need to figure it out. Well, C, in a way, is already there, right? Even though it's going to be on the edge, we have already figured that out earlier. So we need D, E, and X. And we do that by cutting the cube along the diagonal because, because the spots are on the edge, right, of the cube. So if I cut along the diagonal, then I can look inside and I can draw lines from that edge. And these are gonna give me those true dimensions, okay? And at first I had a separate drawing for that X space, but then later I figured out that X being there, you know, in kind of this like smaller square center means that it's X is also here, right? On this other face. So if I cut through there, I can also find that information by drawing a line from there. So really in this section, these are the three spots that we can generate and once we have done that um, we're gonna there is a drawing which I forget now which number I think it's 10x or 11x um, so there would be a kit of parts where you get um, In terms of drawing this, we would draw it like this. You take the square, you do a section. Okay, now I'm looking from the side and then you build up that thing. This is gonna be four inches, by the way. And this is also gonna be four inches. So I cut through this way and then I look and what do I see? I see this, right? I cut like that, then I look at it and that's what I see in the section. Um, so whatever this dimension is, and we said that that's gonna be X. So X is gonna be up here and C would be here, but we really, this is D, this is E and this is X. So now I have basically my keto parts. I have all these dimensions and with this, I can build any segment. So for example, um, C to B goes to the center, right? So with the compass, I could just take, um, actually C to B would be, let's just draw it here. So I'm not gonna do it now with the compass, but I would start, I would draw a line and I say, okay, that's this bit and I put it there, okay? Like that. You know, I take the compass and I measure it. And then the other bits that I need is C going to the center and then B going to the center. So in this case, they're both there. So with the compass, I would make two more circles, okay? And then I start, and then I just keep going. I go to X. So with the compass, I would just end up building the shape, which now is flat, but eventually it would actually be folded and make what the cube is. Now we'll see later that this process, which you can get from this drawing, um, a, a bright, another bright student, let's see, I've mentioned, mentioned Florence Clifford, and there was another bright student named Slate. And when, I, when we did this, we would you do it piecemeal, but he actually figured out that instead of doing it piecemeal, you can draw all these circles beforehand. Because if you think about it, these are a bunch of circles, and these are a bunch of circles. And he said, why don't we just draw everything first? And we call this with the letters, I forget now, maybe A is, let's see, which one is the shortest? Yeah, A, B, C, maybe the next one is X, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and E perhaps, okay. So this is already made, so you need to, you can skip one step and then you build it like this. Oops, sorry, you always go to the, to the center, which is Z. Um, and so you'll have that grid, okay? You can either build it from scratch or have a printout. Um, and let's just back up for a moment 
to let me explain what that how this is all where it's all going um, so if you have a cube um, there is a thing called the orbit of the solid and that means that if you had a sphere let's say the cube you can fit a cube into a sphere perfectly so if it was like perfectly fitting these these spots would touch that sphere that glass sphere that globe okay and um and that would that's what makes it let's say uniform is the word um so now if we had the center and we're trying to find out you know how far these points are we would know they would all be the same right but if you had a different spot here it would be probably a little short right maybe here even short okay but now imagine that these are like little atoms and this is like a nucleus of an atom so this would be kind of turning around um, and they would be the same in other words this spot here or the one on the other side would be the same so the side would the length would be the same so here we did it all kind of bit by bit but here what we did was we took all these orbits and we flattened them out and actually there is a nice little gadget that i can sort of that probably remind you of you know one of those um models of the uh of the solar system so basically this is what this is what that is well and this is actually 3d printed so if you can imagine that there is a cube here somewhere <laughs> okay and let's see is it the same size no it's bigger um but but it's predetermined there's these are these are all predetermined distances from the center right because well because it's flat like this and then what we can do is flatten it the grid and now we can draw our pattern which is what we're doing here so this works really really nice um, once we find this shape um, we just build many parts and after we have built the um, the outside yeah. so we'll build this at uh, you know this is four inches so we'll build this out we'll make a cut here okay we'll make a cut and this will move out this way this will move out this way and then we find the other pieces that will um, generate the inside and we'll we'll construct it and we'll you know we'll we'll do a rough so the required is the rough and the extra credit is the final um where you make a cube that's you know really nice with the tabs and the score and everything there's a way to score it so that it's if this is a mountain you score it on top um if it's a valley you score it underneath um, kind of like origami and then if it's good it's going to stay straight and square okay and the, but we try first with scotch tape um, so if it's done correctly again you know it will be um, the two cubes will be the two halves will be um, perfectly the same and this shows you actually how it's done inside with the tapered tabs okay so let's see um so now i'm trying to remember by heart what the steps so that i can finish this video so we have the first assignment which is just the little thumbnails to find the design right and then we pick one and the next assignment actually is a drawing of your section and then a scale version um, one to four quarter inch scale of the pattern. Uh, then the next thing is to find your shape for the inside, right? Because the, the outside is easy. Um, then the next one is actually doing the, oh, actually before that is that drawing where we do the section, okay, to get, 
these parts. Okay. I think this is called 11x, 9, 10. Yeah, yeah, X because it's extra credit, right? So then this would be 12, which is the shape that you need for the inside. Uh, then 13, I believe is the rough cube, which would be made with, with scotch tape. And for the purpose of this class, because the class is online, everybody's home, we'll just, that's the only required one. Um, so this will be the rough cube, actually two parts, right? Sorry, this is a little, very sketchy. Um, then if you want, I think it's 14, the final cube, I think it's X. Um, actually, I'm gonna, uh, okay, let's see, I think that's the right number. And then, and then we're gonna have two views of your piece um, that are gonna be like this. This is gonna be 15, I think, isometric two views um, and the two views are, are going to be at um, 30 30 and we're going to do a view that's this view which is symmetrical the left and the right are the same and the other one is going to be uh, asymmetrical view so we turn it and so it looks like this i don't know if you can see that they are different yes and that will be the entire um, project so I think I will stop there. So, okay, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do, yeah, seven parts. So I'm gonna do, some of these exist already, but I'm gonna do some more videos to go through for each one of these steps, each one of these drawings. Thank you, we'll see you for uh, part two.